coming to you now is Bread of His Presence with your host, Pastor Cameron Urie, Senior Pastor and Bible Teacher at Renton Park Chapel in Renton, Washington. Well, greetings and welcome again to Bread of His Presence. In recent weeks, we've begun to look at Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, where we find a lawyer approaching Jesus, asking him, trying to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And it says of Jesus, He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he, Jesus, said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, which was two days' wages, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Now, we need to stop here for a second because it's within this section that we've just read together that Jesus begins to use some very specific language, imagery that's meant to draw his listeners back into the Old Testament and recall to their minds a very specific story in their nation's history, a story that gives them, and us, a powerful picture of the kind of love that God expects us to have, a love that is demonstrated in a rather obscure story in the book of Second Chronicles. Remember I said before that Israel became split and became the northern kingdom, Israel, and the southern kingdom, Judah. That is where the enmity between Jews and Samaritans really finds its roots. Well, there's a very interesting story that takes place after that split. Both kingdoms were fighting just to survive. They were fighting against the surrounding nations who were seeking to extinguish them, But they weren't always just fighting them, they were also sometimes fighting each other. Think about this for a minute. All of these people from both kingdoms had shared some incredible history together. All of them had been delivered out of Egypt, out of the hands of Pharaoh. They had crossed the Red Sea together, journeyed to Sinai together, received the law together, journeyed to the Promised Land together, entered in together, and became a nation, and then a kingdom together. But as happened to our country during the Civil War, brother turned against brother. Israel attacked and decisively defeated Judah. And hear this, they put to the sword 120,000 of their Judean brothers all in a single day. And then they're about to lead 200,000 Judeans back to Samaria as slaves. It says the men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. They also took much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. And they're planning to do the same with the Judeans that they've captured. And they would have done so if God had not intervened. Because you have this prophet by the name of Oded who stops them. It says, But a prophet of Yahweh was there whose name was Oded. And he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria and said to them, Behold, 
because Yahweh, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah. He gave them into your hand. And that was true. God had allowed Israel to defeat Judah. But he had done so for a very specific reason. Because they had been dabbling in idolatry. But listen to what Oded says. He says, But you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And now you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? And what Oded was alluding to was the fact that Israel was far more guilty of idol worship than the Judeans were. And so if Israel enslaved its Judean brothers, it would compound their guilt. God's fury against them would reach up to the very heavens. And so Oded says in verse 11, Now hear me and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath of Yahweh is upon you. Now when the Israelites hear the prophet Oded's rebuke, they are cut to the heart. And what they do next is absolutely shocking. Listen to what it says in verse 15. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives, and with the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, and anointed them. And what would they have anointed them with? Oil. And carrying all the feeble among them on what? Donkeys. They brought them to their kinsfolk at where? Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. Now, where does Jesus' parable take place? Jericho, same place. Do you realize that this is one of the precious few times that Jesus ever mentions a specific place in any of his parables? Usually, there's no point. But here, there is most definitely a point. The victim in his story was stripped naked as some of the Judeans had been. And the Samaritan anointed the man, put him on his donkey, and carried him to Jericho, just as was done to the Judean prisoners. Isn't that incredible? You see, Jesus is reminding this lawyer of this incident in 1 Chronicles 28 because in it is seen one of the greatest acts of repentance and compassion seen anywhere in Scripture, in which one side of two warring nations and the conquering side at that suddenly humbles themselves in repentance and chooses to show love and compassion to their enemies treating them like who they really were, brothers. Now, one author I read said that maybe they even went further than that. She said that by anointing the prisoners with oil and putting them on donkeys, it even hints that they were treating them as royalty because coronations of kings were actually performed like that. And we see that in 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 38 to 39. It says, So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites and the Pelathites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. There Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And in fact, Jesus' own riding on a donkey into Jerusalem was seen by the people in a very similar way. And so what is Jesus saying? Is Jesus saying that you and I need to treat our enemies like royalty? I think so. Do you see how this account in 2 Chronicles 28 shows just how brilliantly Jesus answers this lawyer's question? Who is my neighbor? his enemy, the Samaritan, the one who is choosing to show active love, active compassion, just like this lawyer's ancestors did hundreds of years earlier. And how does Jesus close? What does Jesus say? He says, you go and do 
likewise. Now, what could give the lawyer the ability to take what Jesus said and run with it? What could actually enable him to love his enemy in the same way the Samaritans had? Well, the same thing that had enabled the people of Israel to do it. A recognition that they themselves were sinners too. Remember the second part of the greatest commandment of Jesus, which he pulls from Leviticus 19.18, and which the lawyer had quoted here in this passage. It says, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. But remember what we discovered before. The Hebrew text reads, They ahavta, and you shall love, la reaka, to your neighbor, kamoka, as, or like, yourself. And the correct rendering of that final word, kamoka, may in fact be not as yourself, but who is like yourself. And we recently exposited the surrounding context in Leviticus 19.18, which bolsters that translation. But I reiterate it here so that you will see just how this interpretation dovetails beautifully with the story that Jesus alludes to in his parable of the Good Samaritan. That is exactly the truth that the people of the northern kingdom of Israel discovered. And one author I read just recently put it, Indeed, the point when the ancient Good Samaritans repented and decided to love their enemies was exactly when they became aware of the truth of Leviticus 19.18, that their enemies were their own brothers, and that they were sinners just like them. They showed love to their neighbors because they realized they were alike, both in their humanity and in their sinfulness. We are all sinners in need of grace, in need of the mercy, compassion, and forgiveness of God. And circling back to the two main questions of Scripture, where are you and where is your brother, we see that it is when we discover how graced we are before God that we will then be able to reflect that grace into our relationship with our brother, our neighbor, and even our enemy. Corrie ten Boom, in the book Reflections of God's Glory, she wrote, In Africa, a man came to a meeting with bandaged hands. I asked him how he had been injured. And he said, well, my neighbor's straw roof was on fire. I helped him to put it out, and that's how my hands were burned. But later, she says, I heard the whole story. The neighbor hated him and had set his roof on fire while his wife and children were asleep in the hut. They were in great danger. Fortunately, he was able to put out the fire in his house on time, but sparks flew over to the roof of the man who had set the house on fire, and his house started to burn. But there was no hate in the heart of this Christian. There was love for his enemy, and he did everything he could to put out the fire in his neighbor's house. That is how his own hands were burned. How burned are our hands? Are we truly loving our neighbors, even our enemies, as Christ first loved us? If not, we must. Because according to Jesus, heaven is only open to those who do so. And so let us be sure that his love and his forgiveness is always being demonstrated through us to others. Let's do so. Amen. Today's episode of Bread of His Presence is brought to you by Renton Park Chapel, a church that is committed to the ministry of sharing the joy of hearing and doing God's Word and to the mission of bringing people into the life-giving presence of Jesus Christ in and through vibrant preaching, teaching, Bible study, prayer, and ministry to a world that is in desperate need of the healing touch of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to learn more about our ministry here at Renton Park Chapel or would like to subscribe to the Bread of His Presence podcast, you can visit us online at rentonparkchapel.org or breadofhispresence.org. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. 
We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening. And may you know all the fullness of having in your life the bread of the presence of God.